Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out the channel. So what we're going to be working on is this problem shown on screen here, and this is an equilibrium problem. So we have two forces of mag magnitude Ta is equal to 8 kips, Tb is 15 kips, are applied to this welded connection as shown. Knowing that the connection is in equilibrium, determine the magnitudes of forces T, C, and T, D. So <clears throat> with all equilibrium problems, pretty much the first thing you want to do is you want to simplify this problem and you want to draw a free body diagram. So I'm going to set up my X and Y coordinate system here. Hopefully I can draw some straight lines today. Yeah, that's not half bad. All right, so there's my X and there's my Y. All these forces collide right here at this point. So I'm just going to make that point my origin. And typically you want to make the origin point where all your forces are acting. It just makes life so much easier when you go to solve a problem. So let's start applying these forces to my free body diagram. Once again, I'm hoping that I'm drawing some straight lines here. So here is TA which TA was given as eight kips in the problem statement. So eight kips, it's directly along the X axis there. So no angle needed. TB is in the opposite direction along the X axis. And it was stated that it's 15 kips. Once again, no angle needed because it's directly along the X. And then we have our unknown TC, which is pointed directly downward along the Y. And then we have TD, and TD is pointed up and to the left here. So I got to make sure I put on the correct arrow there. TD is unknown, and we have a 40 degree angle off the horizontal, which is 40 degrees off of the x axis. And that's my free body diagram. So I really don't need this first picture anymore. I'm just going to use my free body diagram because I have made everything more simple to look at and to use. So with all equilibrium problems, once you've drawn your free body diagram, you should be able to see what forces you have and what forces you need to find. So our problem statement said we need to find TC and TD, and that's what I have unknown here. So that's what I'm going to be targeting. Whenever you uh, draw your free body diagram and you really don't know where to go next, you're always pretty much in um, equilibrium problems going to have to some forces so with this one, since we are in 2D, we are going to have some forces in the X and some forces in the Y. And since we are in equilibrium, both of those summations will have to be zero. So all my forces in the Y direction, which is vertical, will have to be zero. All my forces in the X direction, which is horizontal, will have to be zero. So let's go ahead and write out those equilibrium equations and see what we get. So with this particular problem, um, and, and with most equilibrium problems out there, starting with one equilibrium equation, X or Y, may make it easier for that problem, or it may not make a difference because you have too many unknowns going on. So looking at my free body diagram over here, TC is 100% in the Y direction, so it will have nothing in the X. The only forces I have in the X are TA, TB, and this component of TD because it's in between the X and the Y. Remember, whenever force is not directly in one direction, it's going to have portions in both directions. So if I sum forces in the X first, TC will not be included, and my only unknown will be TD. So let's start there. That sounds like a good starting place. So I'm going to sum forces in the X direction to be zero, and I'm going to take everything to the right as a positive value in this equation. Everything going to the left will be a negative value. So let's go ahead and let's get TA, which is eight kips. It is pointed to the left. So that is negative based upon my sign convention. That's supposed to be a little K, by the way. <laughs> and then we have the TB, which is 15 kips pointed to the right. Positive because it's pointed to the right. And then I have TD. TD is at an angle of 40 degrees off of the X, so it will have uh, components in both the X and Y direction. Well, are they going to be positive or negative here? 
Well, we're going to use the original arrow here that is shown up and to the left. And since it's up and to the left, my component in the y direction will be up and my component in the x direction will be to the left because it has to match that direction of up and to the left. So we have up and to the left. So my uh, TD component here will actually be minus TD because it's pointed to the left here. And then I'm going to have to use this angle of 40 degrees. And since the angle is attached to the X or off of the X, it will actually be cosine of that 40 degrees there. Because cosine is associated with adjacent and the 40 degrees is adjacent to the X. Sine will be used for TD in the Y direction because the 40 is opposite the Y and sine is opposite. Pretty much wherever that angle is touching, whatever direction it's touching, you're going to use cosine with. So since it's off of the X, we're going to use cosine. If it was off of the Y, if it was 40 degrees over here, we would use sine with the X. So looking at our X here, TC once again is not included because it's 100% in the Y. This is really all we have for our Y equation or our X equation. TD is the only unknown in this equation. Well, whenever you have one equation, one unknown, you can solve for that. So let's go ahead and rearrange and solve for TD here. Well, if we take TD to the opposite side and then divide the other side by 40 cosines, we end up with minus 8 kips plus 15 kips, all divided by that cosine of 40 value. And TD pops out to be 9.13 kips in that general up left direction. And just to uh, reiterate here, this portion right here, the TD cosine of 40, is the X component itself. That whole thing is the X component. TD is the main force we're looking at here. We use the cosine of 40 to turn it into the component in the X direction. So when you're solving this, you're solving for the original force, the, re the original resultant force of TD. So... Now we have TD is 9.13 kips. Only one more to go, and that is TC. Well, TC we can get by using the FY equation. So let's go ahead and write that out. I'm going to take all my forces in the upper direction as positive. Everything in the negative direction will be going downward. So summing forces in the FY equal to zero. T8 is not in, or TA is not included because it's in the X. TB is not included because it's 100% in the X. Well, we have TC, which is going downward. So minus TC. And then TD, which its component in the Y direction will be upward. So it's going to be plus, and it's going to be my new found or my newly found value of 9.13 kips. And this time, because the angle is off of the X, not the Y, and I'm looking for the Y component, it will be sine of 40 degrees. And that's all I have in the Y direction. So once again, TC is the only unknown there. So I can just rearrange and solve, which is a pretty simple algebra equation here. So 9.13 sine of 40 comes out to be 5.87 kips in that downward direction there. So pretty fast equilibrium problem there. And typically when you only have one of the unknowns at an angle and the other one is 100% in one of the directions, uh, the equilibrium equations become very quick and very fast to use. So I hope you found this helpful. And if you wanna see more problems solved of this variety, um, check out other videos on our channel. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.